Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're talking about working with Rampant Design Tools elements inside of Sony's Vegas. Now, one thing I want to mention before we get started is that all of the Rampant Design Tools elements are rendered out using the Apple ProRes codec because of its superior quality. Now, most editors who are new to the game, especially working with an application like Sony Vegas, which is specifically a Windows application, they immediately think to themselves, well, you know what? I know that ProRes is a Mac codec, so it's probably not gonna work on my Windows machine, so maybe the Rampant Design Tools elements really aren't something for me. Well, what's important to keep in mind is that a few years ago, Apple actually released the ProRes for Windows version of the codec so that Windows users can utilize this fantastic high-quality codec just like their Mac counterparts. What's also important to keep in mind is that many of the higher end cameras today, they acquire their footage in ProRes, so it's important that the codec is gonna work properly on both Mac and on Windows. Okay, now just to show you, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna open up the Windows Explorer by simply hitting Windows and E on my keyboard. I'm gonna come into my hard drive here, my external hard drive, and I've got some rampant design tools elements here. And to show you that these are ProRes files, what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna right click and I'm gonna come down to this great little free utility I have called, appropriately enough, Media Info. I'm simply gonna select Media Info and it's gonna tell me everything that I need to know about this file, specifically the megabits per second, I see that the file is 4K, you'll see 4096 by 2160 and the aspect ratio 1.89 at 23976 frames per second. But most importantly, you'll see that this file is in fact encoded as ProRes. Now, the other thing that I can do with this file is I can simply double click on it. And if it is a codec that QuickTime on Windows understands, the file will open properly. If QuickTime doesn't understand the codec, the file will open with a white screen, but you'll see right here, there we go. We have that lens flare ready to go. And of course I can open any one of these here. Let's just close that up. Let's just pick another one here at random. Let's just choose 16 here. Sure, why not? What we're gonna do is just give QuickTime here a second to open. There we go. I'm just gonna view this at half size. There we go. There's another fantastic lens flare. And of course, this will work pretty much in any compositing application. I happen to have After Effects open here. Let's just take one of these elements. I'll just drag it right from the desktop here into After Effects. Of course, After Effects will recognize that it's a ProRes file. There we go. You'll see right up at the top here, still 4096. I can double click on it, and there we go. Okay. Now, this is all fine and dandy. This is a compositing application, but how is this going to work inside of Sony Vegas? Well, believe it or not, these elements are just as easy to use compositing, editing application, Final Cut, Media Composer, and Sony Vegas. Okay, let me show you how this works. Okay, so let's Alt and Tab into Sony Vegas. And what we're gonna do is let's get a clip in that we can use as a background clip here. So I'm just gonna come to Import Media, and I'm just gonna choose one of my basketball shots here. There we go. And I do wanna actually set the project to match this media, so there we go. I'm just gonna come back to the beginning here. I'll just hit play, there we go, a couple guys out on a nice sunny day playing basketball. And what I wanna do now is just add a new video track. I'm gonna right click and we're going to insert an empty event because I'm actually gonna add a third party effect in here that we're gonna apply the lens flare to. And I'm gonna use Boris Continuum Complete's extruded text. So let me just call up the plugin chooser here. I'm just simply going to choose extruded text. I'm gonna say add, we'll say okay. And we'll give the effect a second here. There we go. All I'm gonna do is launch the text window. Of course, we are playing basketball. And I'm just gonna to go to my favorite font here. Of course, everybody knows from my tutorials that when I wanna get the message across, I'm always gonna use impact. There we go. So I'm just gonna, but actually help if I selected the text first here. Let's just come back up to impact. There we go. Perfect. And what we're gonna do is simply say apply. And I'm gonna come down to my front material here. I'm just gonna make it a shiny blue plastic color and let's just shrink it down because I'm ready to apply my lens flare to my extruded text. I'm just gonna come down here. Let's come to my transformations. Let's come down to the master scale. We'll just scale that down just a little bit, not too much. Perfect, okay. So let's get a lens flare in here now. I'm simply gonna navigate back up to file. We'll come down to import media. I'm gonna head back to that ProRes 4K lens flare. Let's just choose lens flare 15 because I know that that is a similar color to my blue plastic color here. 
Again, we're gonna add another video track, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lens flare, and we're just gonna drag it down. I'm just gonna put it right about there. Now, of course, you'll see the aspect ratio is slightly different. Now, of course, this clip is 4K. You'll see the project is 1920 by 1080, 23976 frames per second. What's happened is, is that my 4K element's been shrunk down to fit the frame. But what we want to do is we want to add this into the shot, and more specifically, I want to add it to the top of my basketball text. So what we need to do is we need to switch this layer over to be a transfer mode. Now, how do we do that inside of Vegas? Well, it's actually very simple. If I navigate right over here to my compositing mode, all I'm going to do is simply click on that. Now, a lot of people will use the screen transfer mode. For me personally, I actually like to use the additive transfer mode like that. It brightens it up a little bit and basically whatever's going on in the background of the shot based on luminance values will directly impact what the flare looks like. So what we're going to do is I'm simply going to navigate into the and what we're going to do is I'm simply going to navigate into the event pan and crop window and you'll see now that all I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom back a little bit here and I can actually take this flare, we can make it a little bit bigger if we want, I can make it a little bit smaller, and I can reposition that so we could have it move ever so slightly. I'm just gonna have it move a little bit from sort of the edge of the K here. Now you'll see that as I'm moving this around, I'm actually parked right in the middle of the shot, and I don't wanna do that. I actually wanna come back and have this start at the beginning. So let's just position this right about here to start, and we'll jump down to the end. And I'm not going to go all the way to the end. I'm going to go one frame less. And all I'm going to do is just drag this over just a little bit to about there, I think. Okay. You'll see now if I come back, that flare will travel across basketball. And of course, all I need to do now is simply come in. Maybe we want to add a little bit of a fade in here. I'll just right click. I just want to make this linear. We'll do the same thing with the outgoing one. Whoops, let's just make sure we're grabbing the right tool here. There we go, perfect, right click. I'm just gonna come in, it's linear. And you'll see now, as I drag through, that flare is gonna fade up, move along basketball, and then fade out. And literally, to create this you know, relatively complex effect with extruded text and everything, took only a couple minutes. And the rampant design tools element that we put on was literally put on there and set up in a matter of seconds. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you that ProRes is a user-friendly codec no matter what platform you're working on. And with the power of Ramp and Design Tools fantastic elements, you can use these in your timeline to create very cool composites like I just did here very quickly to amaze and wow your clients every time. And don't forget, you can check out more tutorials and our entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com.